You can find the font used in the description below. For a name input system, similar to the one seen in Undertale, first create a new scene with a VBox container as the core, right click, rename, rename it to name input system. This container will evenly space its children vertically and will be used to space the title, text buttons, and complete buttons. Set the alignment to center. Then under layout, transform, set the size to 500 by 480 and set the position to 70 on the X axis. Then under theme overrides, constants, set the separation to 16. This is the minimum amount of pixels between each child of the container. Additionally, we will set the texture filter to nearest as we are using pixel art. Add a label as a child. Set the horizontal and vertical alignment to center. Under theme overrides, go to font, select the empty, go to quick load, and select the font that you can find in the description. Then go to font sizes, and set it to 32. I will also put the text seen in Undertale. Select the label, then press Ctrl or Command plus D to duplicate it. Right click and hit rename. Rename it to name, and remove the text. Then under layout, set the custom minimum size on the Y axis to 50. This label will hold the name that we are typing, and we set a minimum size on the Y axis to provide additional spacing between the title and the text buttons. Add a grid container to the scene. This node will hold the text character buttons, which there will be 7 buttons from left to right, we set the columns to 7, we will add the individual buttons later through code. Add a hbox container, set the alignment to center, this container will hold the quit, backspace and done buttons, add a button as a child, right click, rename, rename it to quit, set the text to quit, under layout, go to container sizing, and set the horizontal to expand, this way it will space out evenly in the hbox container, then under theme overrides, or colors, set the font color to white, then set the hover, focus and press to yellow, or the color code that you can find in the description, then under fonts, select it, hit quick load, and select the font that you can find in the description. Under font sizes, set it to 32. Then under styles, then set the normal, pressed, hover, hover pressed, and focus to a style box empty. Select the button, hit Ctrl or Command plus D to duplicate it. Right click, hit rename, rename it to backspace, set the text to backspace, and select the button again. Hit Ctrl or Command plus D to duplicate it. Right click, rename, rename it to done, change the text to done as well. Then go to scene, scene save as, and save it. Then select the name input system and add a script. Before we continue with this script, we will now create the buttons that will represent the individual text characters. Create a new scene with a button as the core. Right click, rename, rename it to character input button, then go to scene, scene save as, and save it. Go to layout, then in container sizing, at the horizontal to expand. This is to space the buttons out evenly. Then under theme overrides, under colors, set the font color to white, and set the hover, focus, and press to yellow, or the color code you can find in the description. Under fonts, select quick load, and load the font you can find in the description. Then under font sizes, set it to 32. Under styles, set the normal, pressed, hover, hover, pressed, and focus to a style box empty. Now, if you want the shaking effect that is seen in Undertale's name input system, add a rich text label to the scene, set BB code enabled to true, enable fit content, and disable scroll active, then set the horizontal and vertical alignment to center, under theme override, select the normal font, quick load, and load the font you can find in the description, then under font sizes, set the normal font size to 32. Now if you want mouse input on these buttons, then go to mouse and change the filter to ignore, otherwise this rich text label will block any mouse input to the button. To ensure this rich text label resizes properly with the button, select the button and put a capital A inside of the text field, then under layout transform, try to set the size to 0 by 0. Godot should automatically change the value to the lowest possible value. Now select the rich text label, go to layout, transform, and set the size of the rich text label to the same size as the button. Now drag the bottom right green arrow to the bottom right of the size of the rich text label. Now when you resize the button by tapping a bunch of characters or none at all, the rich text label will change its size as well perfectly. And don't worry about the text being blurry as the texture filter inside of the name input container will fix that. Now because we're using a rich text label for displaying the text of the button, we can't rely on the button's yellow text highlight anymore to get around this, add a script to the button. Inside the script, we will create two custom functions, one for highlighting the button, setting the rich text label to be yellow, and one for removing the highlight and resetting the rich text label color to white. Inside the built-in ready function, we will connect the focus entered and mouse entered to the highlight function, and connect the focus and mouse exited to the unhighlight function. You don't need to connect the mouse entered and exited if you don't want mouse input. Additionally, if you don't want any mouse input on your buttons, then you should set mouse filter to ignore. You would also need to do this on the name input system scene as well. Now for the name input systems code, select the quit button, then go to node, under signals, right click the press signal, connect and connect it to the script. Select the backspace button, right click press, hit connect and connect it to the script. Select the done button, right click press, hit connect and connect it to the script as well. Inside the script, we will define a constant for the character input button, which will be a preload of the scene. Const or constant is the same as a variable, but you can't change it during the runtime in the code. And we use preload to grab the actual scene rather than just a string of the path. Additionally, we don't use load as load is meant for strings that are dynamic or variable, and this string will never change. We then define three variables. Characters is every text character that we will add into our name input system. Here you can also add blanks for empty spaces. Don't worry about these as they won't be pressable buttons and will just act as empty spaces.
space. Name text is the final name that we are writing. You will need to access this variable to get the final name that the player input. So you can use it in situations like saving it to a save file. And max name characters is the total amount of characters allowed in the player's name, which in Undertale is sick. We will then create two custom functions. Character button pressed is a function that will run whenever we press a character button. This will also hold a string called text, which is the text character being pressed. Show name input system is just a fancy function to show and properly activate this name input system. Inside the built-in ready function, we will add all the text character buttons to the scene. This is done by iterating through the characters array with a for loop. We will then create a variable for the character input button that will instantiate the preload. Instantiate will allow us to add a unique copy of the scene as a child with altered properties. We will then set the button's text to I, which is the text character we are currently up to inside the characters array. Then if you want the rich text label, also set the selfmodulate.a of the button to 0.0, .0 so that it is visually invisible, but still retains its shape or box. Then set the text of the rich text label. And I also add the shake effect to the text here as well. We make sure not to set visible on the button default, as then the container will ignore the position of the button node. Additionally, doing that would also hide the rich text label as well, which is also why we need to use self-modulate instead of just modulate. Next, we check if the character is a blank. If so, we set the button to be disabled, and we make it so you can't select the button at all, basically turning the button into just a blank space in the container. Then we connect the button's press signal to the character button press function, and we use bind to pass I or the character to the built-in text variable inside the character button press function. Finally, we add the character input button scene as a child of the grid container. Then after adding all the text buttons, we show the input system. You may not want to immediately show the input system as this may be a part of your main menu scene. In that case, just set visible to false. Inside the character button press function, we first check if the name inputted so far is equal to the max name characters. In that case, we set the last character of the name text to the text variable. This will basically replace the last character of the name with the last press character button. Additionally, we need to add negative one to the max name characters as name text considers zero as the first character in the name. We must minus one from the max characters to reach five, which is technically the sixth character in the name. In the case that the name isn't at the maximum number of allowed characters, then we just add the built-in text variable to the name text variable, and we update the name level to display the name text variable. Inside the show name input system, we set visible to true, then we grab the first text character button and give it focus. Additionally here, you should also set the main menu content to hide first, or you can hide the main menu content, then call this function. Inside the quit signal function, we set the name text and name label to empty strings, and set visible to false. Again, you can choose to show the main menu content here at the end. This function simply resets the name input system. Inside the backspace signal function, we check that there are characters inside the name text, then we grab the last character of the name and set it to an empty string. This will simply delete the last character in the name string, and we also make sure to update the name label as well. Inside the done signal function, we first check that the name was set. If so, we set visible to false. Then here is where you will make a duplicate copy of the name label visible and have it do the size increase animation seen in Undertale. An addition that you can also make is adding an extra input button to the backspace, which can be done by adding the built-in process function. We underscore delta as we won't be using it. Then we check for the backspace input, which for me is UI cancel, although feel free to change this to any input button, then we call the backspace signal function. Now you have a name input system, similar to the one seen in Undertale, that you can edit and improve further, and don't forget that you can check out the project files, link in the description.